the hockey gods and Travis Green are giving us a second chance at life here in the fan base of the Vancouver Canucks as Brock Besser, he is in the best case scenario. I know that everybody, everybody including me, all of us were freaking out two nights ago when Brock Besser blocked a Mark Giordano shot on the rush on the inside of his left foot, and he barely got off the ice with his own strength. He was in a boot. He was wearing crutches. And later in the day, everyone was like, okay, the season's done. That's it. We're done. We can't compete anymore. Because our top three guys are all out. Our best defenseman is out. Say goodbye to the Vancouver Canucks of this season. We're just going to be hoping for Rosmus Dahlin. But yesterday, it was confirmed that this was not a fracture. This was not a break. This was just a bone bruise. And he skated this morning with the team. He was part of the morning skate. Which means... That he isn't out for a significant amount of time. It's day to day with Brock Besser. And I know for the most part that the majority of bone bruises are not as bad as fractures. But there are some significant circumstances where a bone bruise can take a much longer time to recover than a fracture. But the fact that this is a day to day injury and the fact that he's skating... That means that, you know, it's the best case scenario for all of us Vancouver Canucks fans. And I'm not saying that he's going to play tonight. If he plays tonight, that's awesome. I want him to score a hat trick. That's what I want if he plays tonight. But if he doesn't play tonight, that's okay. We'll give him the next game. We'll give him a few weeks to recover fully. And we'll just see what Reed Boucher can do. Because the Comets' top three point guys, Chapu, Goldolbin, and Boucher, they're all up with the Vancouver squad right now. And they most likely will be stepping onto the ice wearing the Vancouver Canucks jerseys tonight against the Montreal Canadiens. Speaking of the Montreal Canadiens and this game that we're playing against them tonight, Travis Green. Travis Green is giving us another shot at being great again. Because Eric Goodbranson is finally healed up, and he is looking to make a comeback in this game. Oh, okay, so Goodbranson's back. Does that mean Biega's getting scratched because he's a right-handed defenseman? Goodbranson's also a right-handed defenseman. That means that we're getting a pairing of whoever, 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 but Biega is out for Goodbranson. Nope! Goodbranson is in the lineup, but Biega, he's also in the lineup. So guess who's the odd man out? It is Ben Hutton. Hutton is scratched, folks. That's awesome. And I never want to say it's awesome to see somebody who wants to play at the NHL level get inhibited from playing in the NHL level. I mean, Ben Hutton probably feels really bad right now, but if we're taking a look at this season and this team, this is probably the best decision because... Biega, I mean, I've been very impressed with Biega recently, and Hutton, there hasn't been anything for me or for any other Canucks fans to validate having Hutton in the lineup over somebody like Biega, who normally is considered an underdog for a Canucks roster. Because if you're saying to yourself, oh, I'd rather have Hutton than Biega, then I don't know what Canucks team you're watching. Because taking a look at, for example, that San Jose game, Biega was an absolute Bob. He was a monster against the Sharks. Hutton, on the other hand, he's been very unimpressive this entire season, and this act by Travis Green scratching Hutton, keeping Biega in the lineup, getting the Branson back, this is interesting. We're getting a new hope and a new shot of vitalization in the mind of Ben Hutton, because this is a wake-up call for the guy. This is Travis Green saying, look, you're not playing the game that we want you to play. You're not as good as you could be. And as a result of that, we're scratching you and we're playing somebody who is the best player that they can be or who is stepping up to that level that we want them to compete in. Because Travis Green, he said so many times, it's about everything. 
It isn't just about the offense. It isn't just about the defense. You got to have a good combination of both. And you have to be a reliable defensive player. Hutton, I'm going to be honest, he's been trying a bit too hard recently. There are a few plays that he makes where I'm like, whoa, that was a really good play. But there are many plays that he makes where I'm like, oh my goodness, he shouldn't have done that. He should have gone with the safe play, made the safe play out of the zone or whatever, make a good pass back down, down low or whatever. He tries a bit too hard from my point of view. That's just my point of view. That's what I see when I watch Hutton. You guys might see something else, but I think there is a general agreement amongst Canucks fans that Ben Hutton isn't as reliable as he was in his debut season two seasons ago. And, I mean, that's unfortunate. Like, the guy is 23, what, 24, something like that? Um, it should be 23, I'm pretty sure. But he's still got room to grow, of course. He's still got room to mature and develop. It's just that after the subliminally high expectations that were placed onto him in his first season where he was legitimately one of the best defensemen on the team... I think it's kind of gotten a bit to his head, and I think there's still that instilled mindset within Ben Hutton that he has to be that number one guy that he was when he debuted, because when he debuted, everyone's like, yo, this guy's gonna be really good, he's gonna be as good as Tanev, this guy is so good offensively, and he makes so many good defensive decisions, that... This guy's gonna overtake Tanev for the best defenseman on the team, and now, two years later, we're looking at him and we're saying, okay, let's get Biega into that lineup instead of him. So, that's it. The Canucks are playing the Canadians tonight. Brock Besser, he might play, he might not play. If he doesn't play, that's okay, because I am still very thankful of the hockey gods for robbing Besser away from us, from this Calder potentially achievable season, and giving us back a Brock Besser who's like, okay, uh, it'll probably maybe be like about a week at max. So it's the best case scenario for Besser right now. So thank you, hockey gods. And it is the best case scenario for somebody like Alex Biega, because Green is out here and he's saying, yeah, we're going to keep Good Branson in the lineup, of course. He's going to be back. But the guy who we're taking out for Good Branson, it's going to be Ben Hutton. It's not going to be Biega. It's going to be Hutton. And I thank Travis Green for that too, because Hutton needed this. And Biega needs a shot too, because Biega has been playing... I mean, everybody was bad in the Calgary game, so I'm not going to call him out for that. But in the San Jose game, he was great. And I'd like to see more of Biega, because he has such an intimidating, calm presence to his game, despite being fairly short. I like Biega in this role that the Canucks have him in. And if I saw him get replaced for Good Branson and have Hutton still remain in the lineup or have any of the other guys remain in the lineup, I would have been like, oh man, that sucks. But this decision, I believe it's the best one. Take out Hutton, put in Good Branson, leave Biega. And if Besser doesn't come back, we could have Boucher. And we can have Boucher be given an opportunity for this NHL roster. So that's it. Canucks are playing the Canadians tonight. You can catch the game later. I don't know if I'll be making a video or not about it later tonight, but it depends. If there's a story about the game that I want to cover, then yeah, I'll make a video. But if there isn't, then most likely not. But I'm excited because the hockey gods are on our side and Travis Green, he's on our side as well. And that's beautiful. Sure, I mean, hopefully the Canucks don't get absolutely blown out and destroyed by Carey Price and his crew, but, you know, we gotta hope. And I'm gonna be watching this game. I probably will be. I just want some entertaining hockey. And I know guys like Alex Biega can provide entertaining hockey. So that's cool. I hope that Branson has a good game back, and I hope Besser can come back soon. Hope you guys enjoyed. This was Repulsion Industrial Trolls like last for SIN Gaming, and bye.